So with this, uh, I am delighted and I have the pleasure of inviting Mr. N.K. Singh for valediction. Give him a good round of applause. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Samiz. Thank you very much for inviting me once again to this glittering Scotch event. I nostalgically recall the many long years of association that I have had with Scotch Foundation. I recall with great pleasure the enormous growth and dynamism which this Scotch Foundation, under your leadership, Samir, has enhanced India's understanding of the key economic and social challenges which lie ahead of us and which need to be resolved if we are to get on to a roughly double-digit growth trajectory. So Samir, on my behalf and on behalf of all of us here, please accept our warmest, my warmest congratulations and grateful thanks for the enormous contribution which the Scotch Foundation has made in a better understanding of India's problems. And Samira, let me also add how delightful I am to see the new generation of uh, the Kocha family having come up, and I'm delighted to see him seated among us. He has a very bright future. <laughs> the Scotch Foundation is in good hands, for many years to come. You want me to speak today a few words on fiscal federalism in India, the recent measures and the impact. Fiscal federalism is deeply ingrained, of course, as all of us know, within our constitutional framework. It is indeed the basic raison d'etre of our constitution. India, the union of states, of center and the states, in fact, embeds in it the concept of fiscal federalism. Indeed, without fiscal federalism, this country could have faced many more challenges of the multiple divisive forces and the multiple forces we did not want India to succeed as one large common market. It is fiscal federalism which has enabled this country to conquer many of these challenges, some very serious economic and social issues, and to continue now to grow at what we know is the, clearly the fastest growing economy in the world. Yesterday, Samir, I was reading this uh, lovely special issue which a London economist has brought out just a few days ago. That issue itself is called uh, the world in 2018, as they see that world. I was reading the portion on India, and I was reading the portion on a general coverage of the evolving global scenario. And two things they point out very clearly. One, that unmistakably, India is the fastest growing economy in 2018. And unmistakably, that we will overtake China in terms of demography, not necessarily development, but China, which had continued to occupy the, the, the distinction of being both number one for demography and both number one for development, would now have to be replaced by India as number one for demography and increasingly catching up on the rates of economic growth. None of this, of course, would have been possible without federalism and fiscal federalism becoming an operational tenet of our economic policy. In the early years of India's independence, 
this took shape in multiple ways. It primarily took shape in terms of three principal organs, which are our constitutional device, and on which I will speak for a few minutes a little later. Let me go on to say that the three institutional devices embedded in our constitution for guaranteeing this kind of fiscal federalism was one, the Finance Commission, which I have the privilege of chairing now, having been less than one month old now in this new application. The other, of course, is the Centre State Council, which is meant to resolve every issue in which there will be differences of opinion between the Centre and the States. And the third is, of course, on India's overall economic structure. It does not mention, the Constitution does not mention the Planning Commission, because the Planning Commission, when it existed, existed by only a statutory, it did not have any statutory basis, it was created by an executive order of the government. So the two principal constitutional organs are really the Finance Commission and the Interstate Council. However, the Planning Commission did exist till it was abolished with, by the new government in 2014. As I look to the records of the previous finance commissions, I look to some very illustrious notes written by many distinguished predecessors of mine as chairman of the finance commission. I read the notes of uh, late Bhavi Chauhan, Brahmanand Reddy, Bhavatosh Datta, K.C. Niyogi, and they all pointed out that the constitution responsibility given to the Finance Commission as the principal organ for fiscal federalism had been somewhat dwarfed by a non-statutory organ and an organ created by an executive order, namely the Planning Commission, which made this artificial distinction between plan and non-plan and did not enable a more holistic distribution of the overall resources and the revenue of this country. Indeed, this would be the first Finance Commission to discharge its obligations without the Planning Commission. And this would therefore indeed <laughs> enable the fin this Finance Commission to fulfill what is assigned to it in the Constitution itself. Now, the roles which are assigned to it in the Constitution itself are large and sweeping enough, but for each Finance Commission, the government in office adds some additional issues on which the Commission is expected to submit their recommendations. Let me say three other important features which have taken place over the last year or two. First, I think that if there was ever a shining example of what fed federal compact meant of a working fiscal federal federalism in practice, it is the evolution of the GST, it is a spirit of partnership, of give and take, it is a spirit in which all states have enabled their sovereignty and the center their sovereignty to be merged for what is called common sovereignty good and the GST is perhaps the most shining example of federation in progress. Think of a situation where constitutional amendments have been undertaken by every state in this union to enable the GST to come into being. And a new powerful federal entity has come into being, namely the GST Council, which has enabled far-reaching decisions on taxation to be taken without voting at any stage, but by discussion and to arriving at a consensus. This is one very important change which has taken place to add a new dimension to what working fiscal federalism might mean. To come back to the theme where I was working on, that in practice, how will the federal polity, I believe, evolve as I see the theme of today by up to 2030? I see that evolution taking place in three ways. First, I see that evolution taking place, that as we in the Finance Commission begin to grapple 
our multiple challenges given emanating not only from the terms of reference which are enshrined in the constitution but in terms of the many newer issues which have been added by the president in our terms of reference. It would enable a more holistic distribution of the vertical divide between the center and the states without some part of planned money as was earlier being done kept away by the kind of distribution pattern which the planning commission used to do. So it will be a more holistic distribution on what is called the vertical divide of resources between the center and the states. Second, it will enable a more equitable distribution on a horizontal divide between the states, between the state's need and the amount of fiscal space which is available. And in doing so, of course, it will be guided by the fundamental principles of trying to foster an even, equitable and balanced economic development of all states and, of course, enabling the capacity of the central government to meet its inescapable obligations. These are, therefore, very critical, important challenges which this Finance Commission would have to grapple with in terms of a very diverse terms of reference and an era where it has not been handicapped by the existence of another non-statutory body called the Planning Commission. I do not wish to denigrate the work of the Planning Commission. I myself had the privilege of serving as a member of that commission for several years. But I do believe that that commission had outlived its utility to meet the more contemporary challenges which really confront India, namely how can a unified India as one common market which is what GST seeks to create and has successfully created, enable us to meet our challenging growth objectives. What can we learn in terms of what has happened to something which I referred to a few minutes ago, namely the working of the GST Council? If the GST Council has been able to resolve the complex issues of taxation involving constitutional amendments, and involving a recalibration of various tax rates as we go along, this council can be a pilot for similar cooperative endeavors, a similar council and similar consultative apparatus to be built for other issues where both the center and the states need to cooperate. They need to cooperate in creating uh, the fast progress which we have achieved, on the ease of doing business. The need to cooperate in areas relating to the factors of production in terms of land, in terms of labor, in terms of the inclusiveness or the financial instrumentalities which have been created. I see in this experiment of the GST Council a huge potential to be able to multiply this pilot experiment to further reinforce the fiscal federal character of the state. So 2000 by 2013, 30, as most people say, India should be growing a double digit rate of growth. India would enable its per capita income to increase very substantially. India would have not only become the world's largest demography, but the world's largest and fastest growing market with a middle class whose size is astronomical with a demographic dividend and a young population who when skilled will be able to provide the work work first to the rest of the world for enabling the new challenges in technology to be met. I do believe that fiscal federalism which is what the fathers of our constitution had given to India is the trigger is a catalyst and has the adaptability and capability to meet the different challenges as we see them arising and as we have addressed in the manner of the GST Council. I do believe that similar experiments and pilots in regard to other important economic issues which confront both the center and the states can enable the ease of doing business in India to be dramatically improved for us to come in the first 50 category 
which is the commitment of Prime Minister Modi and the commitment of this government. I do believe that India would be able to develop a competitiveness which is alluring enough for not only for making India to succeed, but which will enable India to reverse hundreds of years of economic decay and all that has happened in the post-colonial India for both China and India, to reverse history, to take the turn of events, to become the shapers of not only its own destiny, but the global destiny as well. I do believe that it is this fiscal federalism which has enabled us in a cooperative spirit to achieve the India of tomorrow and the day after, which we are ordained and as if Asia is to become and has become, the 21st century belongs to Asia, that 21st century will also belong to India in which we have a very important role to play. Thank you very much.